Brutal Hells Angels Membership Requirements The Hells Angels International Renown began in Fontana, California in 1948. Many of their members are known for engaging in questionable behavior, but they strictly adhere to a code that dictates everything from clothing and vehicles to how one can become part of the organization, rules which must be followed without deviation. This celebrated biker club has taken steps to ensure all other clubs meet these same standards, no exceptions. Entering is only possible with approval by its current members via secret ballot. The Hells Angels website openly advertises that if you have to ask to get into their esteemed club, then the answer eludes your comprehension. This is due to the fact that becoming a member isn't something accomplished overnight. It's a lengthy process that can take years of developing strong ties with other members in order for them to eventually vote you in as an official charter member. Once accepted, however, membership lasts for life, and therein lies its appeal. Before you're in, you're a prospect. For those interested in joining a Hells Angel charter, investigative journalist Julian Scher states that the journey begins as a hangaround. This moniker refers to someone invited by members of the group to events, so both parties can form an opinion on one another. After being accepted into their circle, you become known as a prospect. Your vest bears this title with pride. As part of this transitionary period, prospects are expected to carry out mundane tasks referred by Cher himself as gopher work, errands solely designed for assessment purposes. Their vests are treated as sacred. One of the simplest ways to identify a Hell's Angel is through their vest bearing the famous insignia. When they are accepted as full members, each receives one of these garments with their name and logo proudly displayed on the back. Julian Cher explains that the vests have significant meaning for them. If arrested, members will take great care not to damage it by handing off responsibility for it to another member before incarceration. Even during medical treatments, where removal may be required in an emergency situation, every effort is made to retain its condition without being cut or torn apart by hospital staff. They have a dress code. Many charters come with their own set of rules and regulations, one in particular being a dress code. For instance, an individual joining the charter may only be required to wear black jeans or shirts along with vests. In some cases, shorts are not even allowed. Traditional colors such as all-black attire is widely used among members, but other choices like blue jean or camo patterns can also create unity while distinguishing each member's belonging within the larger organization. As you may be aware, Hells Angels biker gangs tend to take up an entire street when riding. But what you might not know is that there's actually a very specific order they maintain while on their bikes. The road captain and charter president remain in the lead spot of the gang members, with seniority and rank determining who follows behind them. Typically, older members toward the front, followed by newer recruits, ending with prospects at the tail end. They all pull over together. The need for order within the Hells Angels is so paramount that if one member gets pulled over by a law enforcement officer, all of them come to a stop. By remaining unified, not only does it better illustrate the accepted hierarchy, but also reflects how tightly bound this brotherhood truly is. This unity conveys an even more powerful message. Any slight against one angel will be taken as offense from them all. Individuals are less likely to stir up conflict with such an intimidating group known for their fearlessness and tenacity. They can't work for a prison With the notorious reputation of Hells Angels, it's understandable that they're prohibited from working in prisons or as law enforcement officers due to potential conflicts of interest. The group stands for freedom and runs by their own rules, which would be antithetical with those employed in a prison system or police force. Additionally, members have been known at times to engage in criminal activity making them an inappropriate fit within those roles. You can't share information about fellow members Not only does being a member of the Hells Angels disqualify an individual from joining law enforcement, but it also requires all members to abide by its rigorous discretion policy. Those who are found to be disclosing any information about fellow brothers or sisters, regardless if they are missing or not, can expect immediate expulsion from the gang. In order to ensure that everyone in the group is secure at all times, the official website of the Hells Angels explicitly states, we do not answer questions about members. 
their commitment and allegiance to each other remains unwavering above every other priority. Once a Hells Angel, always a Hells Angel Joining the Hells Angels is a major commitment. Members cannot resign, and the only way out is by breaking one of the group's rules. Your chapter quickly becomes like an extended family to you. In fact, most members have already known each other for years before officially joining. Whenever someone passes away within their ranks, every member stands together to pay tribute to them and remember who they were as brothers in arms. No talking to the media For the sake of safeguarding their collective interests, members of the Hells Angels are not granted authorization to speak with the media. This helps guarantee that all individual members adhere to a strict vow. No one talks about anyone else. According to investigator Julian Schur, talking is strictly prohibited when it comes to matters concerning group codes from which they drive security and protection against potential disclosures or leaks of information regarding them. Therefore, by keeping secrets internalized amongst everyone involved in this motorcycle gang organization, there's less possibility for compromising any sort of safety or privacy measures within their ranks. Long-standing association with Harley-Davidson Becoming a Hells Angel requires more than just being any biker. Rather, it necessitates that you be the exact type of motorcyclist they're seeking. As we've discussed before, the selection process can take several years because only those who feel like family will be accepted. To prove your worthiness to join their ranks, one must own at least one Harley-Davidson motorcycle. The Harley holds such value due to its symbolic representation of the sacred vest and is an essential component of what makes up their group identity. They ride thousands of miles a year together. The Hells Angels travel an impressive 20,000 kilometers as a group annually. That's more than 12,000 miles. Those looking to join the Brotherhood must be passionate motorcyclists and have their bike serve as their primary method of transportation. The uniting factor between members is the shared passion they possess for bikes. Riding represents freedom and complete liberation. This is why they enjoy spending hours on end on roads around the world. Show up to club events If you truly live the Hells Angels lifestyle, then making it to an activity should be at the top of your priority list. When members don't show up for meetings and gatherings, they demonstrate a lack of understanding about what the club stands for. Accordingly, biker brotherhoods hold a rigid attendance policy. Those who are frequently absent from events will fail to progress beyond being casually involved with recruitment efforts. Members are like family The members of the Hells Angels don't just come together to ride their bikes, they form lifelong bonds, becoming like family. Their enthusiasm for motorcycles serves as a source of unity and purpose, but it runs much deeper than that. It's an entire way of life, with each member deeply united by shared beliefs that can never be broken. When these individuals gather at events or meetings, something special happens. A bond unlike any other is created among all those who join in on the experience. Don't join another biker club The Hells Angels are connected by a bond destined to last forever. This commitment demands that members never even consider becoming part of another biking organization. Moreover, Hells Angels members must be aware of who they associate with. The website states, do not tie your support to the club with other clubs, street gangs, or anyone else if you are uncertain about their bond with the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. To put it more plainly, any actions taken by a member should bring honor and praise to their organization as a whole. It's a brotherhood, not a sisterhood. The Hells Angels are an exclusive brotherhood, making it so that only men have the right to wear the iconic death head insignias on their back. Their female counterparts may not be members of the club, but they surely play a significant role in its functioning and success. For any man looking to join this crew, his partner must first understand what kind of commitment is involved with being part of the Hells Angels. She must also accept their lifestyle and all that comes along with it before her significant other can even gain membership. Not just anyone can start a charter. Forming a charter is not something that happens underneath the blink of an eye. According to Hells Angels' website, motorcycle clubs are formed by individuals who have been riding together for years and share similar interests. These riders become known within their community and create runs, parties, and a bond between one another. 
Therefore, it takes decades to reach this point before transitioning into becoming part of the Hells Angels organization, which explains why on their website they state that when you feel ready to form your own charter, no questions will be asked. You don't want to break the rules. Violating the Hells Angels rules is something their members will surely regret as they're a loyal and tight-knit bunch. The ramifications of betraying the Brotherhood can be extreme. Investigator Julian Schur has even heard stories of them burning off tattoos from those who have broken their code. Being forcibly removed from membership is by far the most severe punishment. This results in complete isolation and excommunication with all other members. Don't question the missing apostrophe. Even the keenest grammar enthusiast would notice that something is amiss with Hell's Angels, namely an absent apostrophe. Because these angels are affiliated with Hell, it should be noted in a possessive fashion between Hell and S. Yet this rule-breaking gang chooses not to pay heed to such conventions. Their website bluntly states, Yes, we know there's an apostrophe missing, but it's you who miss it. We don't. Moreover, by the time of their inception in 1930, another war film called Hell's Angels had already been released, thus any changes were rendered unnecessary now and then. Non-members can buy merchandise to support the club Although the members of Hell's Angels frown upon those donning their insignia who are not part of their club, they have set up a support shop where fans can purchase merchandise to show their appreciation and support. This is welcomed by the members as proceeds from the store go towards local charters. With every item sold, more events that celebrate bikers and community life can be hosted for everyone to enjoy. You have to be clean One would assume that the Hells Angels, known for their tough attitude and behavior, wouldn't be too concerned about what substances a member uses. In reality, though, this couldn't be further from the truth as they are particularly rigid when it comes to any member engaging in illicit drug use. The Toronto Charter of the Club recently relayed to the Star that all contact or utilization of substances is strictly prohibited, even needles used for pleasure. So needless to say, one must stay clean or risk being expelled from membership. You can't link to their website without permission. Surprisingly, the Hells Angels have a strict rule that must be followed. In order to link to their website, you need written permission. This makes sense given how intensely they guard their members' privacy and confidentiality. As stated on their website, establishing or operating links to this website without prior written authorization from the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club is strictly forbidden. Approval may also be withdrawn at any time according to the club's own discretion. Prospects cannot retaliate against hazing. When you're being considered for membership in the Hells Angels, there is one critical rule to follow. Never take revenge against any hazing that may occur. Although it can be an unsettling process, this practice is not designed with malicious intent, but rather as a means of testing your character and determination. If you retaliate during the initiation period, then unfortunately you will no longer remain eligible for consideration as a member within the club. Only members can wear official merchandise. The Hells Angels take their patches and the etiquette of wearing official merchandise to heart. As such, only members are allowed to don its wares. If you attempt to fake it or impersonate a member by purchasing its products without going through proper channels, be ready for trouble. Retaliation is certain. To properly show your support for this legendary organization, make sure you do so in a responsible manner that follows all protocol. Patches are sacred. As members of the Hells Angels ascend in stature and attain higher levels, they are armed with patches seen as sacred symbols. These must be honored and treated with utmost reverence. That's how serious it is. This code of honor has become so stringent that one hears whispers about members even refusing to allow medical personnel access if bodily trauma needs tended to, unless their cherished patches can remain unscathed. Consent is required. Despite the tough reputation that precedes them, it should be understood by now that a great deal of respect and restraint is expected from Hells Angels members. Even when interacting with women, consent must always be present. Any instances where abuse or taking advantage occurs are strictly forbidden and hold serious consequences for those who break this rule. They don't talk about missing members. 
Despite the friendly aura that often comes with being part of the Hells Angels, this organization is also highly private and protective when it comes to its members. Not only do they protect any member who has gone missing, but as a rule, club associates are forbidden from speaking about other members or their activities to anyone outside the group, not just for privacy reasons, but also to keep everyone safe from potential legal repercussions. Some charters will allow non-Harleys under one condition. Riding a Harley Davidson is an acknowledged rule across the Hells Angels organization, as written in one of their regulations. While almost all charters follow this law strictly, some will permit members to ride alternative American-made motorcycles such as Buell motorcycles. Founded in Wisconsin back in 1983, these bikes are seen by many charters as acceptable substitutes for Harleys. The club always comes first. Becoming a Hells Angel member is like joining an extended family that puts the club first. If you join, you'll be giving voting rights as well as get to actively take part in club activities and events. Your loyalty to the group should remain steadfast at all times, even if life throws other challenges your way. Joining a club is not just an occasional commitment, it's a lifetime dedication and wives must understand that the club always comes first. Therefore, you should fully immerse yourself in this new lifestyle if you're serious about being a member of the club. There won't be enough time for anything else. Cultural inclusivity is not widely accepted. The Hells Angels have long been evocative of an all-Caucasian brotherhood. However, it's increasingly more common for Hispanic members to join the club. Other cultures are welcomed too on a case-by-case -case basis, with some charters taking up progressively enlightened stances, while others remain cemented in their traditional customs and beliefs. Every meeting has strict rules. Whenever club members gather for meetings, they still need to obey Robert's Rules of Order. Developed in 1876, these regulations were first developed for business meetings but have since spread into Hell's Angels circles as well. The rules dictate that all participants must adhere strictly to the agenda and should only speak when absolutely necessary. Additionally, questions can be raised before proceedings begin. Should any member violate a rule set out by Robert's Rules, they may face an expensive fine, up to 100 bucks. Prospects do the dirty work. Becoming a part of Hells Angels is an intensive process. You must initially hang around them in order for you to get their attention and eventually become a prospect. During your probationary phase, you'll be helping the gang with any tasks that need to be done, such as setting up meeting rooms before other members arrive. This period will give Hells Angels time to figure out if they want you as one of its full members or not. After successful completion of all given duties, prospects receive the iconic Hells Angels logo on their vest, signifying that they've officially joined the organization. Only one group can control an area. Hells Angels have specific hierarchy when it comes to claiming an area. If one group has claimed the spot, then no other gang may linger around that space without passing through, regardless of affiliation. Moreover, rivalry with other motorcycle clubs, such as Outlaws Motorcycle Club, is quite intense. Thus, members of both groups make sure to visit separate hospitals in certain cities so they don't cross paths. Hells Angels Run Charities Despite the notorious reputation of Hells Angels, they're committed to providing charitable services. During their annual toy drive for Toys for Tots and donation of 200 bicycles to Poverello House, a nonprofit organization supporting the homeless, it's evident that members have an altruistic mindset. Furthermore, they also invite other cyclists on their charity motorcycle rides, yet realize that these good deeds often go unnoticed as captured in their motto, when we do right, nobody remembers, when we do wrong, nobody forgets. They respect people who respect them. Don't be intimidated when it comes to conversing with a Hells Angel. They abide by a strict code of respect. So if you present yourself in the right manner, they'll do their best to reciprocate your kind demeanor. Numerous journalists who have conducted interviews with them attest that these riders are usually inviting and surprisingly receptive to questions. Furthermore, Hells Angels have been known to lend assistance not only within their own community, but also for complete strangers, as long as proper courtesy is exercised during such interactions. So don't hesitate. Just remember that the same level of politeness you offer is what you can expect from them in return. They work as concert security. 
If you chance upon the Hells Angels at a concert, don't be scared, they're likely there for security. It all began in 1961 when George Harrison invited some San Francisco bikers to London for a Beatles gig, gaining their admiration and respect. Since then, many bands have hired them as part of local protection during concerts, an opportunity that also gives members additional money and allows them to showcase their pride within the group. They Honor the Deaths of Their Members In the world of Hells Angels, riding motorcycles is part and parcel to their lifestyle. Thus, death can be an unavoidable consequence. In order to honor those that have passed away, especially younger members, the Hells Angels go above and beyond in memorializing them. From displaying posters with images of the deceased or taking rides while carrying photos of them, recounting stories at gatherings, they do all they can to keep alive a person's legacy. On what would have been Clay Hubbard's 21st birthday, his mother Christy met members of the Hells Angels in her town for their annual rally. At first feeling apprehensive, she was comforted by the bikers, who even prayed with her in a parking lot to honor Clayton's memory. She gave them each a bracelet so she could ride along with them on future journeys. This tender moment came after Clay had taken his own life the year prior and provided solace to those mourning him still. Community involvement is crucial The Hells Angels are well known for their community involvement, taking part in various charities and events. Plus, they often show patronage to the same bars and stores near them. It's clear that this gang is not just about themselves, they make sure to take care of their local area too. When Hells Angels found out that a local bar was raising money for Self School, which provides educational resources to children with disabilities and cancer patients, they immediately sprang into action. They volunteered their time and raised funds for the materials needed in order to make it happen. This is just one of the many ways in which this notorious motorcycle gang gives back to their community. Protecting the brand is crucial While it's clear how important safeguarding the Hells Angels brand reputation is, you may not be aware of just how far they're willing to take their tactics. Surprisingly enough, violence isn't always the answer, and in some cases, legal methods are employed instead. In order to safeguard its brand, the notorious Hells Angels have taken legal action against some of the most prominent companies in existence, including Disney, after the release of their feature film, Wild Hogs. They Follow Their Own Rules As members of the Hells Angels, their most critical regulation is to abide by their own rules rather than societies. When you join this club, there are specific mandates that you must obey and adhere to. These regulations become your way of life nothing else matters in comparison. One article surrounding the club noted that they despised everything ordinary Americans seek – stability and security. They rode their bikes, spent days at bars, fought against anyone who challenged them. This self-governing group boasted its own distinct set of regulations and a code of behavior like no other extraordinary. The Beginning of a Legacy it's widely accepted that the Hells Angels were formed on March 17, 1948, in Fontana, California, by a group of World War II veterans and the Bishop family. With their shared love for motorcycles, they decided to bring together various post-war motorcycle clubs to create this iconic organization. In spite of all the media reports and legal issues, according to the Hells Angels, their initiation was a response to post-war life which left many young men feeling bored and missing their sense of camaraderie. The fact that military surplus made motorbikes inexpensive only helped propel this idea forward. 